On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, a group of Tesla executives discusses some new features and innovations of the Cybertruck in a video with Sandy Monroe. Plus, there's some bad news about the future of the Model 3's federal tax credit eligibility, Giga Mexico is officially ready to break ground, and more. What's happening, friends? I'm Ryan McCaffrey, joining you for the December 17th, 2023 episode of Ride the Lightning, your weekly Tesla unofficial podcast. It is episode 437. So much to get to this week. We are still in the wake of the Cybertruck delivery event, and so there is plenty more Cybertruck stuff to talk about on this week's episode, which I'm looking forward to. There's some good stuff in here. I want to start with a thank you to listener Steve, who provided what I thought was a pretty great explanation about the pressurizing the battery pack question that I had wondered aloud about on last week's podcast. You remember the Wade mode that the Cybertruck has. So Steve put it this way. He said, quote, in a fixed size vessel, the battery pack, scuba tank, etc., the more air you pump in, it's adding weight but the amount of water that fixed size vessel will display will remain the same, so it's less buoyant. I'm sure it's like the cabin during bioweapon defense mode. By adding positive pressure, any small possible leaks will be keeping what's outside on the outside. So Steve, thank you very much. That definitely crystallized it for me, and I appreciate uh, you sending in that note. Speaking of the Cybertruck, this week's Patreon poll asked the Cybertruck reservation holders out there, have you ever owned a truck before? You know, this is something that Franz von Holzhausen brought up in my last interview with him back in January. Gosh, I can't believe that's almost a year ago already. He had said, yeah, a lot of our reservation holders have never owned a truck before. And I said in the middle, I said back, like, yep, that's I'm one of those people. So... That was the simple question, and the response was was pretty interesting, I thought. Lots of votes on this one. One third of the respondents that I would have been one of if I were allowed to vote in my own poll was no, the Cybertruck will be my first truck. So, I mean, that's that's pretty significant. A third of the potential buyers, you know, just as a sample size of the Ride the Lightning audience, it'll be their first truck. 38% of you said, yes, I've owned a truck before, either an ICE or an EV truck. And then 29% of you voted, I'm not purchasing the Cybertruck or just show me the results. So yeah, I just thought that was that was a pretty interesting poll and, a, and an even more interesting poll result this week. So thank you to everybody that kindly took the time to vote. A reminder that the poll goes up on my Patreon page Roughly every Tuesday evening. That's when you can pretty well count on it. And anyone can vote. You don't have to be a Patreon backer in order to vote in the Patreon poll. Just head on over every week to patreon.com slash Tesla podcast in order to see each week's question and vote. Oh, and before I really get into this week's show... I just wanted to issue a quick correction. Really, it was just a quick slip of the tongue on my part, but I did want to acknowledge it nevertheless. So lifetime premium connectivity that is included on the Foundation Series Cybertruck won't, as I said last week inadvertently, save you $1,000 to $1,200 a year. It will save you an order of magnitude less than that. It'll be $100 to $120 per year, again, depending on whether you pay monthly or pay yearly. And the 1000 to 1200 will be saved over the course of a decade if you plan to hang on to the truck for a long time, which I most certainly do whenever I have the good fortune to get my Cybertruck. So uh, again, I think all of you got this already. You knew that I was messing up on that one. And many of you pay for premium connectivity now, so you you know that price in your head, and you're like, wait a minute, that a thousand bucks a year—that's not right. But anyway, I still wanted to apologize for my 
misfiring brain on that. Okay, let me get some bad news out of the way before I get back to the usual fun Tesla stuff this week. I have to tell you about this. I could not just let this go. This is far too important of, of a bit of news here to not discuss. So, we have an update to last week's story about the base Model 3 and the long-range dual-motor Model 3 getting their federal tax credit eligibility cut in half in 2024. And unfortunately, the news is it's actually worse than it being cut in half. Tesla themselves is now saying that those two Model 3 variants will lose the entire tax credit eligibility. Now, that is obviously awful news, and I really hope that some way, somehow, we get a thorough explanation of this at some point, hopefully sooner rather than later, be it from Tesla themselves or from the IRS. Now, the criteria to get the tax credit under the Inflation Reduction Act does change every year. The stipulations get tougher every year, and meaning, I mean, in short, the battery and the, the components of the battery, the minerals in the battery, need to be more and more American-sourced or uh, sourced from countries with a free trade agreement with the United States. But Tesla now guiding customers to say, starting in 2024, the two of the three Model 3 variants won't be eligible at all. So if you're wondering, well, wait a minute, how is the third one available? How does the third one have the tax credit available to it? And I'm right there with you wondering the same thing. So the Model 3 performance is not listed here as having upcoming ineligibility for the $7,500 federal tax credit because does the performance not use the exact same battery pack as the long range does? I thought it did. Maybe it doesn't. I mean, it's currently, as of right now, it's a $5,000 price difference between the long range Model 3 and the performance Model 3. So if you're going to buy a Model 3 in 2024 and you qualify for the full tax credit, it might turn out that you actually get a better deal buying the performance version. Now, there are some things to take into consideration. One of them is Highland, which I'll talk about in a second. But the other one, just if that idea appeals to you, like it appeals to your heart, you got to just filter it through your brain for a second. Maybe your heart will still win out. It did for me when I bought my Model 3 and chose the performance. But you got to know that if you are going to go down that road, your tires are going to cost more and they're not going to last as long. So you are going to have increased tire costs on a Model 3 Performance versus a Model 3 long range dual motor with the 18 or 19 inch wheels. And if you're in a cold weather climate, the Model 3 Performance is delivered with summer tires on it. So you are also going to have to spring for either a set of winter tires or just take the summers off and put, put all seasons on or as a lot of Model 3 performance owners in cold climates like to do, buy an actual entire separate set of wheels for winter. So you just swap the wheels and tires at the same time in a set just on and off pretty quickly and easily. So you got to factor that in. But uh, again, the, the actual price of the car could end up being less here depending on how this shakes out. But as I mentioned a moment ago with Highland, that is the other piece of this to consider. Highland is coming. Highland performance has not debuted yet anywhere. And I expect Highland performance will debut pretty soon. It possibly at the exact same time the Highland rolls out here in North America at all. So uh, I can tell you, what, how can I phrase this? I will just say that I've had some birds whisper in my ear that there are indications that Highland is coming to the United States sooner rather than later. And there's one other thing that that makes me think about, 
which is this. From the Highland reveal not that long ago, what, two months ago? I could swear that Tesla was telling everyone that the battery and drivetrain in the Highland are exactly the same as the old Model 3 because that was brought up in the context of the additional gained efficiencies of the Highland, that it wasn't coming from the the drivetrain or the battery pack, but instead from the new aero shape on the car, you know, the front end of the car and, uh, you know, different wheels and other other little things that they've done, but not the pack or drivetrain itself. But perhaps, and I hope, hope this is going to be the case, perhaps the battery pack on the Highland, which I expect to debut in early 2024 in North America, will be just different enough from the current Model 3 battery pack to get back on the right side of the federal tax credit eligibility for 2024. I mean, it's obviously in Tesla's best interest to make sure as many of the Model 3 variants qualify for the credit as possible, because this is their entry-level car for the time being. It's And Tesla, I mean, the, the selling point goes up. It's, it is easier to sell a Model 3 when you can say to a customer, especially when that tax credit in 2024 becomes a point of sale eligible credit, where you can say to a customer, well, it's a $39,000 base price and we can take that tax credit off for you before you drive off the lot, bringing you down to what? To to thirty one five at that point. So uh, it is in Tesla's best interest to make that credit happen for the Model 3. So going to have to hang back and see what happens there as it specifically pertains to Highland in 2024. Because at least for the current quote-unquote classic Model 3, sure, those are going to, you're going to be able to buy that car in 2024 for at least a little while. I mean, they're, again, I expect Highland sooner rather than later, but those, the current Model 3 does not appear to be getting any tax credit whatsoever if you buy it, if you take delivery in 2024. All right, one more piece of kinda bad news. This is much less bad, but it looks like the Cybertruck does not have the Phoenix HD radar that the new Model S and Model X have. Credit for this goes out to FSD beta test extraordinaire Chuck Cook, And yes, if that name sounds familiar to you, it is he of Chuck's unprotected left turn down in Florida. Chuck posted on Twitter slash X this week saying, so Green the Only, of course, Green being our white hat hacker friend in the Tesla community. So Green the Only found that the Cybertruck electronic parts catalog is available online And some have looked to see if there is an external Phoenix radar like the one being installed on the S and X on Hardware 4. And apparently the parts catalog only shows an interior radar, probably for occupant detection. So the Hardware 4 radar experiment mentioned in Walter Isaacson's book was just as described, an experiment only on the Hardware 4 S and X. And yes, Chuck has has reached a logical conclusion there. So it stands to reason then that the experiment did not yield results that Tesla was hoping for and or Tesla feels confident enough in their vision only system as they move to hardware four and five megapixel cameras to not proceed with HD radar in the fleet. Or there is another possibility or they will proceed with it, but only the S and X and probably Roadster, anything on the higher end of the of the product lineup will ever benefit from whatever additive layers of safety and or autopilot functionality that the Phoenix HD radar is able to provide. So again, semi bad news there that this was something that I'd been wondering about. This exact thing, I had brought this exact thing up on the podcast not too long ago. Uh, There is more from the parts catalog, though. It's online. The Cybertruck parts catalog is online. We've got some prices for parts. 
So these prices that I'm about to tell you, just a few things, not, not gonna go through the, the price of every single thing, but these are just the parts prices. So keep that in mind because if labor is involved to install the part, like say a windshield, you're gonna have to obviously pay labor on top of the part cost, but just to give you an idea, here are a few part prices on the Cybertruck. Let's start with the windshield. The giant windshield, which is the biggest piece of glass in the entire automotive industry, according to Tesla, that is a $1,900 windshield. The giant four foot long Giga Wiper, the windshield wiper blade, also, I believe, the largest single windshield wiper on a passenger vehicle in the automotive industry. That is a $75 piece. So you only have to buy one, not two. So it's not 150 at least. So really, that's not too bad. And $550 for a front fender, which again, I don't quite know what a fender would cost on say a Model 3 on my car. Of course, you also have to then paint that fender if you were to replace that fender, which you don't have to do on the Cybertruck. 550 seems kind of reasonable to me for a fender price. How about a Cybertruck specific Goodyear all-terrain tire? Taking note that it's the all-terrain tire, not the all-season street tire that is presumably going to be offered on the Cybertrucks as the default thing in whenever general production does start. And we're gonna talk more about general production in a couple of minutes here. But that all-terrain tire from Goodyear, $470 each. I don't know how long that tire will last for being 470 bucks a pop. We know there's lots of meat on those tires, so hopefully they last a while. And those that is a question that we will answer as Cybertrucks get out into the wild and people drive them on those all-terrain tires. So again, I would say overall, just from those handful of prices, I, I think those prices aren't terrible. Like for most of that stuff, I honestly would have expected the prices to be more. And at least like the, the windshield, the Giga Wiper, the windshield wiper blade, you can replace that yourself. And I am under the understanding that uh, the windshield wiper blade replacement is something that's recommended every two years. Now, I, was, I had that confidently written in my notes, but I was in America's Tire this week, in fact, yesterday, because I wanted to go in and my new set of tires that I got, gosh, I don't even remember when that was, but I'm over 6,000 miles on those tires now, so I wanted to get them rotated. But... They were super busy, so I made an appointment for a couple weeks from now. But anyway, the point of this is to say that as I was standing in line waiting to waiting for it to be my turn to, to talk to an employee, there was a sign that said, replace your windshield wipers every six months. That seems, I'm, I don't claim to be an expert on windshield wipers. That seems excessive to me. I mean, I'm in a, I'm in a place, San Francisco, where it does rain a decent bit for three, four-ish months out of the year. So my, you know, the wiper blades do get used on my car for a, a decent chunk of the year, and then, and then they basically go totally unused when it's sunny and not raining for the rest of the year. And I've, like, mine have lasted two years, no problem. Six months seems like like America's Tire is just trying to sell you wiper blades when you don't necessarily need them. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So if you were to replace your Giga Wiper in your Cybertruck every other year, well, then it's basically costing you $37.50 a year for, for that part. Because again, presuming you can install that yourself, which you will indeed definitely be able to do that. And then the windshield okay, when you factor in installation with that, that is going to be over 2000 bucks. But if you've got glass coverage on your car insurance policy, well, then you'll only be out your glass deductible. And as you may, some of you may recall, 
on the advice from some of you out there, I had my glass dedu deductible lowered from $500 to $100 after the last time I had to replace a windshield because my monthly premium only went up a few bucks. It seemed worthwhile to me to lower that deductible so that if and when I do end up needing to swap the windshield again, that it's only gonna cost me a hundred bucks out of pocket. All right, so there you have some prices for some Cybertruck parts. I hope all of you out there that are kindly backing me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Tesla podcast at that $10 per month tier or higher. I hope all of you enjoyed my lightning round bonus mini episode this week. I do those every single week on Patreon. And the topic this week was my five holiday wishes to Tesla. Five things that I want Tesla to get all of us for the holidays. Are they gonna happen? Maybe. Are they gonna happen in time for this holiday? Certainly not, but it was five holiday wishes, wishes that I made to Tesla. So as a reminder, you can join up for the Patreon if, you, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while and you'd like to support it. There is now a 75 lightning round mini episodes up there for you. So if now seems like an awesome time to, to jump on the Patreon and support the podcast, you will not only get my thanks, you will not only get early access to each week's episode, but if you're at that $10 per month tier or higher, you'll get access to all 75 of those lightning round mini episodes, as well as every new one that I do each and every week. So again, head on over to patreon.com slash Tesla podcast to sign up and to see all the tiers, get all the information, etc. Time for the proper news. Those were all the appetizers. So now we're moving on to the main course for this week. And I start with the headline topic. And that is our friend Sandy Monroe, the manufacturing expert known for tearing down cars so that other car companies can pay Sandy for his reports and they can learn what their competitors are doing and either steal those ideas or learn how to do them better or what have you. I don't know what those other car companies do with those reports, but clearly uh, they're worth a lot of money because, you know, Sandy... It's not cheap to tear down a car with the expertise that Sandy Monroe and his team have. Anyway, Sandy had the red carpet rolled out for him at Giga Texas for the Cybertruck delivery event. You'll remember that last week I played you a clip from his Elon Musk interview that he did at Giga Texas. And this week he posted another video Sandy got just under an hour with not one, not two, but five senior Tesla folks for an engineering deep dive on the Cybertruck. Those five people are Lars Moravi on the hardware engineer, engineering side, battery guru Drew Baglino, our friend Franz von Holzhausen, the chief designer, Pete Bannon, who is the low voltage and autopilot hardware lead, and David Lau, the vice president of software engineering. So I've got several clips to play for you from this. I do encourage you to watch the whole thing because the whole video is fun. It's on youtube.com slash Monroe Live with Monroe being spelled M-U-N-R-O, youtube.com slash Monroe Live for the whole thing. Let's start, as far as these clips go, with Pete Bannon answering Sandy's question about whether or not the Model Y will now get moved over to the next-gen 48-volt architecture that the Cybertruck has. Part of the problem is that we have a tremendous amount of manufacturing capacity in place to build 12-volt things for Model Y, and we don't really want to rebuy all that capacity and retool it for 48 yeah. volts. So. 48 volts is very much a forward going thing as we redesign yep. new cars and introduce new cars or we have to increase capacity, then that's an opportunity, you know, since we have to go buy new tooling anyway to switch to 48 volts. Yeah. And that's sort of true for a lot of the capabilities across the car. Well, that certainly makes sense for now. 
But I would not be surprised if Project Juniper, the Model Y refresh that we're expecting towards the end of 2024 or so, ends up having 48 volt. I mean, in hindsight, it seems like the Highland Model 3 just missed it, but it does make a ton of sense for the Y to move over to 48 volt once it's redesigned, if for no other reason than the savings on wiring in a car that does like 1.2 million units per year. It's Tesla's highest volume car. It would make sense to move it over to 48 volt when this Model Y refresh happens in about a year or so. All right, next clip for you. Here's David Lau revealing a feature that I don't believe we knew about on the Cybertruck. Take a listen to this. Audio flowing over that same network and bi-directionally too, because when we're doing active road noise cancellation, we've got yeah. data coming in from microphones and other sensors that then has to get processed by an algorithm centrally and then fan back out to the speakers yeah. to, to actively cancel noise. Did you catch it? Active noise cancellation. It would seem that the Cybertruck is getting that same active noise cancellation feature that the new S and X have, which is pretty awesome. Both in a vacuum, it's awesome, and also good news considering that for the time being, the Cybertruck is priced like the S and X. Now, the Cybertruck's also got Alcantara headliner like the S and the X do too. So I guess what I had been saying in the run up to the Cybertruck launch about how I thought that the Cybertruck kind of fit between the S and the X and the three and the Y in the product lineup isn't really accurate. It's probably more accurate, I think, to say that the Cybertruck is roughly on the same level as the S and X in the product lineup. All right, next clip for you. Here's Lars Moravi explaining how Tesla folds the HFS panels. You remember HFS from last week, hard, fun, stainless. Here you go. Uh, okay, yeah, so yeah. let's see. Let's, okay, so how would you classify um, this the forming operation. process? Yes. We, we call it air bending. Air bending. Yeah. And so basically it's a, it looks like a press brake, but we're shooting high pressure air on a bearing that's floating the steel. So as the brake moves up and bends it. So are you doing it cold? Yeah, we're doing cold. Oh, all right. It's wrong. I know. Um, and rare, it just a rare moment. It just a rare moment. Yeah. It <laughs> no, I'm wrong a lot. Just ask, uh, <laughs> ask any of my people. They'll tell you. It floats the air, right? So. Yeah. And then, and then you get that cushion of like a, air hockey table almost underneath yeah. it it's just so you don't get the bruises on it and we don't see that orange peel or that mark from the brake mm, and then cool. we have full it's all computer controlled right so we have full you get some spring back and then we can oh, we can come back and oh, do re redo day. it if we yeah. need to so that's why we get the precision i'll tell you what i really want to see a video of this air hockey table style bending process and i'm sure that at some point we will see a video of that and as Lars said, it's going to be awesome once they get it all dialed in because they'll be able to form them quickly and then boom, they're ready to go right on a truck because there's no paint shop that that panel needs to go through. All right, next, here's Lars explaining Tesla's thinking behind offering the range extender. But yeah, with, with the range extender up, up over 460 uh, miles. And obviously if you're somebody that tows a lot like I don't know, San Francisco to Tahoe, the range yeah. extender might make sense, but. Well, the average person drives 40 miles yeah. a day. I mean, yeah. it's like. That's, that's why I, we decided to make it an optional yeah. add-on. And, and I mean, yeah, most exactly. people, you know, you know, 340 miles, 320 miles, which we're gonna, what we're gonna give in the dual and the tri, like that, yeah. that's totally fine, like for anybody. And then we wanna make more electric vehicles, right? So like rather than putting more cells yeah. in that no one's ever gonna use, yeah. if you want it, you can buy it. He didn't say anything particularly surprising there. It's exactly what I figured it would be when I talked about this two episodes ago. But what I like about this, why I wanted to play it for you, and what I like about Tesla folks in general, meaning Tesla employees, is that this is not a PR massaged answer. Of course, I mean, there's no PR department, so it, it kind of can't be. But what I'm getting at is that was a genuine response and it makes sense. I appreciate that. Even if I don't love the implementation of the range extender, there that explanation, again, makes perfect sense. And, and I accept that explanation and I do appreciate it. All right, two more brief clips for you. 
with this first one being an interesting little nugget from Lars about steer by wire. Steer by wire. Steer by wire. You asked for it on, on Model I S. Did. We did it on Cybertruck. Uh, I thought you were going to bring it out on the Model S Similar and scare the crap out of everybody. Sometimes things take a little bit longer to bake. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, between David and me, this is a labor of love, I would say. There's a lot of functional safety yeah. that went into this. I acknowledge that I might be reading too much into that, but to me, that answer sounds like that maybe they did initially plan to do steer by wire for the new Model S and Model X, but weren't able to get it done in time for the start of new S production back in the summer of 2021. Which, if that's true, it would make the yoke on the Model S make even more sense. If they were planning for it to be a steer by wire system, with the variable ratio steering like the Cybertruck now has, the yoke makes a ton more sense. I mean, as I said last week, or maybe it was the week before, the, all the weeks are blurring together. There's just so much cool Cybertruck stuff to talk about now. I do expect that the SNX will get this feature before too long. I mean, it really would make that yoke option on SNX way, way, way more desirable. All right. Last clip now, and it is about the driving dynamics that Tesla was shooting for on the Cybertruck. Here's Lars. Um, communication system at, you know, 10 milliseconds, which is basically the, the frequency response of the hydraulics, right? Like, yeah, so yeah. Um, it's super good, and you'll notice it when you drive it. It's really competent on the highway, but when you go off-road, it's also super comfortable. It's not harsh and, and, and whatnot, and we can keep the body roll down, the pitch down, I mean, it really does drive like a Tesla, and that's something that we really, really wanted it to be. Not this unwieldy, you know, big thing, but like feel small, nimble, like a sports car, like every Tesla's made, have zero to 60s of, you know, 2.6 seconds and all that torque. Yeah. Then we had to really add this to, 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 to unlock it. I like that answer. It's supposed to drive like a Tesla, which would be a heck of an achievement considering that it's a 6,800 pound full-size pickup truck. I can't wait to drive it for myself and see how it drives compared to my Model 3 performance. Obviously, it won't drive exactly the same as a sporty sedan that's low to the ground, uh, but i just super stoked to drive that truck at some point down the road. All right, that's it for the clips from it. I urge you again, head on over when you get a chance to youtube.com slash Monroe Live to watch the whole thing. It's just under an hour long. All right, before I get back to this week's Tesla news, I want to just pause real quick here and remind you about Accelerate Auto's X-Care extended warranty coverage for your Tesla. It is just a much more flexible way to go than Tesla's own factory option extended warranty, which is only two years and 25,000 additional miles. X-Care offers up to 10 years and 125,000 miles after your factory warranty is up. It can also be purchased for any Tesla, no matter whether or not you bought it from Tesla. If you bought it new, you bought it secondhand. Doesn't matter. Tesla's is only offered to customers that bought their cars new from Tesla. So X-Care plans offer everything that Tesla's own extended policy does, including the $100 deductible, 24-7 roadside assistance, but X-Care also offers rental reimbursement and trip interruption coverage, which Tesla does not. They also now have the battery and drivetrain coverage as an option. You don't have to add it onto your policy, but you certainly can if you like. That is a pretty new feature for Accelerate Auto. So check them out. See which plan is right for you. Customize a plan for yourself at accelerateauto.com slash xcare. That's X-C-E-L-E-R-A-T-E-A-U-T-O dot com slash X-C-A-R-E. And don't forget to use the discount code LIGHTNING for $100 off your purchase. Okay, back to the week of Tesla news, and let's get back to talking Cybertruck. We have a Cybertruck production update of sorts that would seem to negate my previous analysis on this subject. This comes, or at least it was spotted, and that's where I saw it, via Tesla tipster Sawyer Merritt, who posted on X saying, Tesla has pushed back new Cybertruck Foundation Series estimated delivery dates, with the Cyber Beast now showing as mid to late 2024 delivery, and it had been early 2024, 
with the all-wheel drive foundation series showing January to March of 2024. It had initially showed December to March, so that's they're now saying, I guess, if you haven't ordered already, you're not getting one here in the month of December in the year 2023. With uh, Sawyer also noting in his posts saying, this suggests Tesla might be making a lot more than the estimated 1,000 Foundation Series Cybertrucks that some people thought. And you know what? I'm inclined to agree with Sawyer on this because it appears that Tesla might rip through the entire reservation list. Yes, all of it. Now, this is purely my speculation, but I'm basing this off of off of these newly revised Foundation Series production, or excuse me, delivery dates that show the Cyber Beast not delivering until up to late 2024. So maybe Tesla is going to go through the entire reservation list and see who bites on a Foundation Series before they then move on to general production at the quote-unquote vanilla prices of 80000 for the all-wheel drive and 100000 for the Cyber Beast. And if that theory is correct, what I'm super curious about is how geographic priority will factor into that. Because we already know that Tesla is prioritizing California and Texas deliveries. Meaning that if I'm a good ways back in the reservation line because I didn't put my reservation in right away, but I'm in California and specifically San Francisco, close to lots of Tesla service centers and the Fremont factory and the engineering headquarters. In other words, a ton of resources should the truck have an issue. And thus, you know, right in the middle of Tesla's prioritized area of California. The question is, will I get invited to purchase a Foundation Series before someone in, say, North Dakota who made their reservation earlier than I did? I suppose it could go either way, right? There's a case to be made either way. It's impossible to predict how Tesla is going to approach it. But regardless... If Tesla indeed does go through the entire reservation list to see who is willing to go for the more expensive Foundation Series bundle, then then I'm comfortable saying that I expect all of us on the reservation list will have an opportunity to purchase a truck in 2024. Whereas for the last four years, those of us who aren't, who didn't put down a reservation in day one or even week one, you know, a lot of us have been thinking, well, are, is it going to take two or three years before we get a truck? And it might still, but you might get this opportunity, yes, to pay more, but to, to get a truck sooner at, at a higher premium price. Uh, so the reality is, if that theory is accurate, then most people, it's fair to say, are not going to opt for the Foundation Series because it's even more expensive than the already more expensive than anticipated base MSRPs of the Cybertruck. The the, the fact of the matter is, even with a million to two million reservations, you know, who knows how many of those are are real because a lot of people had multiple reservations. Anyway, so let's say just over a million reservations, you go through everybody a hundred plus thousand dollars, you know, a hundred thousand as the minimum, there aren't going to be a, a, a ton of people in that million plus that are going to opt in for that. And the other thing that, that I thought about here too is if this is the strategy, it lets Tesla kick the can down the road on whether or not to honor the $7,000 FSD prices that early reservation holders have attached to their accounts. As to when that question is going to have to be finally answered, well, I'm not sure. Could it be as late as 2025, given that those Founders Series Cyber Beasts are showing late 2024 estimated delivery date windows? I don't think so. I, I I just can't see general production not happening until 2025. 
because Tesla anticipated needing about a year to fully ramp up production on the truck. And I could easily be wrong, but I just don't think that there are 100,000 or more people on the reservation list now that are willing to do Founder Series at those six-figure prices. But clearly, whatever the, the situation is, Tesla has a plan here, and clearly, it is a different plan than what they did for any of their previous launches. Because if you think back, just the I won't get into the details, but S and X rolled out fairly similarly to each other, but not like this. And the 3 and the Y each rolled out not only differently from the S and the X, but differently from each other. So the Cybertruck now added to the list. It is getting its own unique rollout here. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next, really, I would say, three months. Like the first quarter of of 2024, is anybody going to get a general production invitation? Or is it just going to be more Foundation Series invites as they go down the reservation list? Finally this week, Tesla's Gigafactory in Mexico received approval for construction in the form of federal land use permits. I saw this story on Tesla Rati, who writes, Mexico's Federal Ministry of the Environment recently notified Tesla in the United States of the permit approval. According to Millennio, which is the publication being cited here, the Department of Natural Resources and Wildlife of the Management of Subdelegation for Environmental Protection and Natural Resources, boy, that's, that is a mouthful of a department right there, <laughs> contacted Tesla's legal representative in Mexico about Giga Mexico's permits earlier this week. The representative received Giga Mexico's permits from Rocio Moya Gamez, enabling Tesla to change the site's use and identify the parcel of land a Project Tesla Gigafactory. Quote, This morning I am very happy because I spoke with the Secretary of the Environment and the federal permits for Tesla have already been notified, said Governor Samuel Garcia Sepulveda. Thank you to Tesla Roddy there. All right, so we finally have the regulatory green light. Now let's see how long it takes from here to get shovels into the ground. If it happens in the next few weeks, i.e. at the very start of 2024, that probably means best guess the building would be ready for production around the middle of 2025 or so. But here's my question on that. Elon has said that the Generation 3 car will begin production at Giga Texas, not Giga Mexico. So might that mean that Giga Texas spins that car up before mid-2025? Or might Tesla actually just go ahead and take their time on Giga Mexico rather than go at ludicrous speed on the construction like they did for Shanghai, Texas, and Berlin? Or might Tesla actually finish the building in Mexico instead of moving in at the earliest possible moment and starting production while the rest of the building is still under construction. I don't know. I think there are a few different ways that this could play out and we'll see how it goes, but that is good news that Giga Mexico is ready to get shovels in the ground. That is everything I've got for you in another busy week of Tesla news, but stick with me. I've got some of your excellent phone calls queued up and ready to go in the Ride the Lightning hotline right after this. Hi, this is Franz von Holzhausen, and you're listening to Ride the Lightning with Ryan McCaffrey, the Tesla unofficial podcast. You know what time it is. It's Ride the Lightning hotline time. Your questions, your comments, your discussion topics, call in. I would love to hear from you. And if you do so, you've got a chance to be featured on an upcoming episode. There are two easy ways to call in. Either use your smartphone's built-in voice recording software. Record your question. I ask that you please try to keep it to 90 seconds or less so that I can get to as many people each week as possible. And then email that file to me at teslapodcast at gmail.com. 
Or you can take that same 90 second or less question and call in and leave a message on the Ride the Lightning hotline. It's toll free. You can dial at any time. The number is 1-888-989-8752. Again, that's 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they are special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Visit lifeonrecord.com to learn more. Kicking it off this week with Lewis in Florida. Hey, Ryan, it's Lewis in Florida. And I actually think the price of the Cybertruck is going to go up with time. S3, X, and Y have all had price drops because of how high interest rates have gotten. So Elon's very concerned about what monthly payment prices are for these vehicles. There's no reason why he wouldn't be concerned about that with Cybertruck also. So... The reason why I believe that he's saying that they're not going to make a lot of money with Cybertruck for at least a year or two is because they're going to have to wait a year or two for interest rates to come down. And then when they do, they can raise the price of the truck. So you have to take into consideration what the average monthly payments are going to be and what Tesla considers to be an acceptable average monthly payment. And that's where the price is going to be set. Anyways, have a good one. You make a very reasonable point here, Lewis. Elon has definitely said that Tesla has in part lowered prices in order to keep the cars affordable for buyers during this period of high interest rates, keeping their monthly payment reasonable. The Fed did say this week that they anticipate rates going down in the coming year, so that's good news. However, Tesla's costs on the Cybertruck are going to come down as well as production speeds up and moves through that S-curve that Elon always likes to talk about. So at worst, hopefully the idea of the price going back up with reduced interest rates is canceled out by Tesla's costs going down. I remain optimistic that the prices will come back down over time because think about it this way. The Cybertruck is currently priced almost identically to the Model X. And the Model X has sold around 60,000 units or so every year since it was introduced in 2015. Okay, the first full year of production was 2016, but we get that combined number, S and X, right? We know X outsells S a little bit. The combined number has really never been higher than 120,000. And since the SNX came back with their new version after the long hiatus, it's been less than 100, so it's been more like 100,000 between the two of them. So that gives you an idea of where the demand is for SNX at the prices that they've been at. So I acknowledge that yes, the pickup truck market is a different market than the luxury SUV market, but still, I can't imagine there are 250,000 customers, meaning a full year of production, willing to pay Model X prices for the Cybertruck for more than the first couple of years of production. Like there are people willing to pay that, but for how long is the question? I just don't see it being more than a year or two of, of full production. So we shall see what happens, but Lewis, I do appreciate your point. Excellent food for thought on that call. Next up, frequent caller Brian from Pennsylvania reacting to the Cybertruck. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Ryan, thanks. I appreciate that. Cybertruck, as in everyone else is also talking about Cybertruck now. Here's my takeaway. I was thinking about getting one. I'm now maybe a little hesitant on it, and here's why. Battery size. If everything we're hearing is correct, this thing has... Uh, depending on the variant, maybe um, anywhere from 120 to maybe 140 kilowatt hour size battery for rough back of the napkin math. And please, if I'm incorrect in anything I say here, please feel free to correct me. But that is roughly double the size of what is in Model 3, Model Y. With that, and and also then the car having a similar range of the Cybertruck having a similar range. With that said, to use the Cybertruck, it's going to cost you almost double the amount of electricity to go the same distance in my quick assumptions and um, assertions of this. To make a road trip with it, 
I would assume that you're probably also going to be spending almost twice as much time at a supercharger, which isn't all that exciting either. Yes, I know version 4 chargers are coming and they're going to be faster, but I don't know if the cost savings is there to justify the Cybertruck as a daily driver and being that I mean, yes, this is going to be more efficient than a comparable gas car or a gas truck, but I, I, I'm very curious to hear just how how this works and how efficient it is and how many miles per kilowatt you are getting on the Cybertruck. So that would be, I guess, the question I know on the Model Y. You get roughly 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. What is the Cybertruck? I guess that's really the ultimate question to to know that but from what i'm getting out of this i'm thinking it's gonna cost almost double the electricity because the battery is almost double and the range is very similar to that of a y or a three thanks again always good to hear from you brian well almost double is a little bit of a stretch it's really about a 60 percent bigger battery but your larger point about higher cost per mile is a very valid one So in that sense, if you don't need a truck, like me, I don't need a truck, but you just want the Cybertruck, a three or a Y would absolutely be more cost effective, not just in the sticker price of the car, but in the operating costs. And like, don't get me started on the tires, which I covered earlier in this podcast. They are not going to be cheap in comparison to, say, 19 or even 20 inch Model Y tires. But... If you're gonna do truck stuff, then obviously the Cybertruck is is really your only option, certainly as far as Teslas go. The Ford F-150 Lightning and the Rivian R1T are out there too. Obviously they're great trucks, but I'll be honest with you, I hadn't really thought about the higher cost per mile, obvious though that may seem to everyone who's not me. Fortunately, I am very lucky enough that I've got solar panels, so It's not really a concern, and and the good news is you're still driving electric, so it's so much cheaper than gas that even if it's a higher cost per mile than a 3 or a Y, it's still way, way cheaper than an internal combustion engine car. Now, as for supercharging, Tesla claims that you'll get up to 128 miles of range back in 15 minutes. You, of course, have to be at a super low state of charge for that. Compared to the Model Y which gets 162 miles back in that same 15 minutes on that same 250 kilowatt V3 supercharger. So there is a bit of a difference there. But as you noted, the V4 superchargers that can max out at 350 kilowatts are coming, and the current Ys and 3s are probably going to be unlikely to take advantage of the full power of the V4, whereas the Cybertruck will be able to. Though admittedly, it is probably going to take a while for version 4 superchargers to really become commonplace. The V3s, meanwhile, are everywhere. So, in summary, yes, the Cybertruck will cost you more in terms of energy costs compared to a Model Y. But I ask you this. Can you take a hammer to your Model Y and have that hammer just bounce off? No, sir. No, you cannot. So think you got to keep that in mind as well. I mean, in all seriousness, the durability factor is is awesome on the Cybertruck. All righty. Uh, next caller, Daniel from rural Oklahoma, also reacting to the Cybertruck delivery event. Hey, Ryan. This is Daniel from rural Oklahoma. Hey, I was just going to say... I was also kind of disappointed in the prices and the range extender being a little gimmicky, but there is one positive I thought I'd throw out. With the range extender adding 50 kilowatt hours of battery pack, it probably will increase the total amperage that the battery packs can give to the motors, which may actually improve improve performance regardless of the additional weight. Because, I mean, heck, if you improve the battery pack by about 50%, you might actually get 50% more horsepower to the engines, which would maybe even get a 0 60 down in the Model X flat range. Just thought it was 
Just so I'd add that little tidbit, I love the performance, power, speed of the Cyber Beast, and I'm contemplating getting one of those. Talk to you later. Bye. You make a great point, Daniel. Part of the reason the S and X Plaid can do what they do is having the 99 kilowatt hour battery pack to draw from. Part of the reason the next gen Roadster, at least when it was unveiled, was going to be able to do what it wanted to do at the time, since achieved by the Plaid S, was due to having 200 kilowatt hours to pull from. So I hope you end up being correct and that if you spring for the range extender on the Cybertruck, you end up getting getting a little acceleration boost upgrade to go with it. So let's put a pin in that one and we'll come back to it next year and about a year from now when Tesla gives us more information about the range extender when they start rolling out. Thank you, Daniel, for calling in. Thank you to everybody that was kind enough to take the time to call in, being a part of the podcast. I welcome and encourage you to do so. I gave you the call-in instructions at the top of this segment. So if you would like to call in, responding to something you heard from another caller, responding to something I talked about in the top part of the show, you can feel free to call in and I will be here ready to receive your call. All right, I am not quite done yet. I want to tell you about what I've been up to in the world of Tesla, as well as give you your pro tip of the week. That'll all be coming up right after this. This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117. You're listening to Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast. You know, that Cybertruck looks a lot like a warthog, doesn't it? Master Chief, out. As for what's going on with me and my car... I spent some time uh, this afternoon after work doing a wipe down of my ultra white seats, getting some dog spittle off of them, (laughs) dog slobber off of them, uh, getting them all nice. Tomorrow, as I record this, it'll be in the past for most of you that hear, hear this, there is a Tesla owners of Silicon Valley club event in Palo Alto tomorrow that I'm looking forward to attending. It's a holiday toy drive, so I went and picked up my toy for donation today. And there will be, in addition to a bunch of lovely people that I'm looking forward to getting back in touch with after, I guess, when I saw some of them at the Cybertruck event. Anyway, there will be a Cybertruck there. That note was just sent out by club leadership today, confirming that. So looking forward to seeing a Cybertruck at the club event coming up in Palo Alto tomorrow. That'll be fun. As for an entertainment recommendation for you, yes, I've got one. I don't think I've mentioned this yet, and if I have, I apologize. It is a video game this week, and that game is the Game of the Year award-winning Baldur's Gate 3. It is a role-playing game. I mention it specifically because it's now available on Xbox. It had been held up, hadn't quite been able to get onto Xbox yet. It ha- it's been out for a few months on PC and PlayStation 5, but it's now on all three of those major platforms. Not Nintendo. It's never coming to Nintendo. It's too complicated of a game for that technologically complicated. But if you've got a gaming PC, a PS5, or an Xbox, definitely cannot recommend Baldur's Gate 3 enough. It just won Game of the Year at the Game Awards, which is where I was in Los Angeles last week. IGN gave the award to Zelda this year, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which I certainly can't argue with. But Baldur's Gate 3, I'm just getting into it, and I'm really looking forward to it just based on All the amazing things I've heard about that game. All right, back to Tesla. How about a pro tip of the week? It comes this week from Dave in Philadelphia. Good morning, Ryan. It's Dave from Philadelphia. I'm actually sitting in my car outside the local YMCA waiting for a software update to complete. It said it'd be taking 25 minutes, and I think it may be closer to 30, but I see some activity, so no big deal. Of course, everyone knows you'll get the software release notes when the update's complete, and you can go back and look for them if you want to, and you can even get them on the app these days. But what a lot of people miss is when the menus are updated, Tesla puts a little blue dot underneath it. So if you look at the little car icon on the lower left, uh, it'll have a little blue dot under it. And in this case, it says uh, Autopilot. If you look at the menus there, uh, Autopilot has a little blue dot next to it. When clicking into Autopilot, now you can see that there's a new flag on the Autopilot activation for single pull or double pull, that new option. 
So uh, you may have mentioned this before, but I think it's something that uh, a lot of people miss. So as you get a software update, take a moment to take a peek at where those blue dots are, and you might learn something new. Anyway, thanks for all you do. Take care. Yes, thank you, Dave. That is indeed a relatively new addition to designate new additions, if that makes sense. I think it's really useful. You know, it's nice for users to easily and clearly see what new things are there that they might otherwise miss, and it's nice for the Tesla software team to be able to easily highlight the new things that they've worked so hard on so that their hard work doesn't literally go unnoticed. Appreciate that pro tip of the week, Dave. If anybody else out there has a good pro tip of the week that you'd like to share with me and your fellow Tesla owners and enthusiasts, you can send it in the same way that you send in a regular Ride the Lightning hotline call, which I gave you the simple instructions for a little while ago. They're also pasted in every week's show notes, if that is useful to you as well. Before I get going this week, let me mention some friends of the podcast that can hopefully be of use to you sooner or later. I'll start with abstractocean.com. They've got a million different excellent aftermarket Tesla accessories. Whether it's the custom fit fourth generation tempered glass screen protectors for your main center screen, whether it is the nice rear footwell lighting kit for the Model Y, uh, I wonder if that's going to be available for the Cybertruck because those Cybertruck front seats are on risers as well. And if there's not already some lighting under there, and I'm not actually sure if there is. I'm going to have to go see if I can find a video that shows the lighting under the front seat. Anyway, it could end up being a good uh, good Cybertruck accessory as well. I'm sure the Abstract Ocean folks are taking notes on the Cybertruck, seeing what what aftermarket stuff they might be able to cook up. But in the meantime, they do have a ton of stuff for the S3 X and Y, go to abstractocean.com, click on whichever car you have, put everything you like into your online shopping cart, and when you get to checkout, use the coupon code RTLPODCAST and you will get 15% off of your first order. That's very kind of Abstract Ocean to offer that discount to the Ride the Lightning listeners. Thank you very much to Abstract Ocean. The Snap Plate, now alongside the Snap Plate Plus, that's a bit stronger, is available for the 3, the Y, the X, and the S as well. Go to everyamp.com slash RTL and use the coupon code RTL for a nice discount on top of that. This is the front license plate bracket that'll snap on and off in seconds. It's a nice, clean, minimalist design. If you gotta have one by way of your state's jurisdiction, your state laws, or if you just wanna have one on there, I definitely recommend the Snap Plate or the Snap Plate Plus rather than the thing that Tesla gives you with your car, which attaches via automotive adhesive, automotive tape, so that if you ever want to take it off, it is not going to come off cleanly. So grab the Snap Plate or the new Stronger Snap Plate Plus at everyamp.com slash RTL, and don't forget that coupon code RTL. BudgetSafeSolar.com. Keep them in mind if you're shopping for solar for your home or business. The uh, battery home battery storage is now part of their option package as well. If you'd like that as part of your solar installation, they have all all the main brands, including the Tesla Powerwall. So I'm really curious. My brother-in-law is getting a budget-safe solar installation right now. He's moving through the process. He's going to be getting a Tesla Powerwall. I am very curious to see what his looks like when it's all said and done. He's got a totally different type of house as far as the just physical construction and layout than, than, uh, than our very like narrow, vertical, tall San Francisco house. So looking forward to that. Anyway, budgetsafesolar.com. If you do end up proceeding with a solar installation for your home or business, please use the referral code RTL. Next up, Immaculate Reflections. Fantastic detailing packages available to you. Maybe you want to do paint correction to get that paint finish looking as good as it possibly can, better than it comes from the factory, because every car from any manufacturer is going to leave the factory with some flaws that don't get caught during the course of production. A professional detailer is the best way to get rid of those flaws, and Immaculate Reflections here in the greater San Francisco Bay Area is an extremely awesome, talented detailer 
and also just a, a Jeff's a great guy as well. So uh, there's also, of course, paint protection film that you can do on some or even all of the car. And don't forget about ceramic coating as well. If, you, if the idea of waxing your car every, well, twice a year, every six months, to try and keep that finish looking as nice as possible and protected from the sun, if that, if that sounds like annoying work to you, which it straight up absolutely does to me, do ceramic coating. Have a professional detailer like Immaculate Reflections ceramic coat your car because that will last a good three to five years, if not more. I mean, my car is over five years old. And the last time that I was at Immaculate Reflections, I can't remember why. Forget why I was over there for something. But I had him. Che- I had Jeff check. I'm like, is my ceramic coating holding up okay? And at the time, the car wasn't five years old yet. But he, he looked the car over and was like, yeah, it's still still holding up. So anyway, master detailer Jeff McGovern of Immaculate Reflections. Go to irdetailing.com if you'd like to learn more or get in touch to book one or more of those services. And if you do that, make sure to mention that you're a Ride the Lightning listener and Jeff will extend a nice little Ride the Lightning listener discount to you. PureTesla.com slash RTL is your one-stop shop for your dash cam and sentry mode setups. I highly recommend it. They use a micro SD-based memory storage format, which is going to be better for the long-term wear and tear that the dash cam and sentry mode use, because it's constantly reading and writing as you're, as the car is either operating or even if, if the car is not operating, but you've got sentry mode turned on, guess what? That drive is constantly being written to. So I recommend the Pure Tesla drive, which you can get at puretesla.com slash RTL, 49 bucks for the 128 gigabyte kit, $69 if you want to go to 256 gigabytes, Sh- uh, free shipping anywhere in the U.S. Check them out, puretesla.com slash RTL. I mentioned my Patreon a little earlier in the podcast, but again, that is the place to go. If you'd like to support the podcast, you like what you hear, you've been listening for a while, you'd be doing me a huge favor. Uh, I'd really appreciate if at some point you said, hey, yes, I'm going to support you on Patreon, Ryan. You've earned my support. You can go to patreon.com slash Tesla podcast to find all the information about that, all the different support tiers, all the different perks that are associated with each support tier. The higher you go on that perk tier list, the, the all the perks stack. So if you go all the way up, you get all the perks from, from all the tiers. So check it out, patreon.com slash Tesla podcast. I'd be humbled and grateful if you would consider a pledge. Most of you get the podcast via one of the major podcast services. You can subscribe to this podcast on any of those big podcast services, totally free of charge. Subscribing in this case just means you are officially following the podcast when there's a new episode released. It will be a push notification will be sent out to you. So whether you use Apple Podcasts, which with this holiday software update that's now rolling out, you have natively in your car. So that's good news for me as because it makes this podcast easier for you to find and listen to in your car, which is great. So uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Uh, And if you are trying to find me on YouTube, I recommend searching Ride the Lightning Tesla. That'll be the quickest and easiest way to find my channel on YouTube. If you need a referral code, uh, I hope you'll find someone's that's not mine, ideally, because I want other people to... I've been very lucky over the years to benefit quite a lot from the referral program, thanks to the generosity of all of you listening. So hopefully you'll find a friend's family member's co-workers referral code, but if you just need one to get the perks of the referral program to, you know, when you're purchasing your car, you can use mine, type in ts.la slash Ryan73014 in your web browser on your desktop or phone, and that will take you to the Tesla Design Studio where you can choose which car you'd like to configure a design for, Then you design it, place the order, 
and that referral code and the referral perks will be baked into your order. You can follow me on Twitter slash X as well as Instagram. I have the same username on both and that username is DMC underscore Ryan. You can email me anytime. My podcast email address is teslapodcast at gmail.com. And that brings me to just about the end where I say hello and thank you to the top tier Patreon backers, the most generous folks that I am very, very extra grateful for. I'll start with the grandfathered in plaid level supporters. Plaid is no more, but as these kind folks continue to pledge at that level, they will continue to get the perks and benefits associated with that. So a big thanks goes out to George Cassioppo, David Brander, Logan Willis, Peter Chalet, Eric Randolph, Dory and Steve Guberman, the Tesla owners of Taiwan, Ron Lee, Charlie Gillespie, David Perella, Dennis Peak, Jeff Angwin, Chase Cabanillas, the Lydia family, Aaron Altschul, Jared Brown, Jerome Strack, Jamie Dalton, the Tesla owners East Bay Club, Mike and Barbara from Louisville, David J. Howes, Matt Nixon, the Tesla Owners Club of Wisconsin, Ish, not Elon Musk, Peter, and the Bear Boys of Colorado. Next up, a big thanks goes out to the Maximum Plaid backers we had, as expected last weekend, as, and as, as our part of our monthly Patreon Zoom hangout. An awesome, fun, really fun conversation, getting everybody's very fresh reactions to the Cybertruck event. Um, wait, was that? Yeah, that was last weekend. So t- time flies. It seems like the, the deeper into the year you get, the faster it goes by. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, thank you very much to the Maximum Plaid backers. They are Jonathan Wales, Cameron Clark, Daniel Grummer, Seth Capello, Nick and Tony, the Galpin family, Ryan from New York City, Darren Nickel, Kaz Barnes, Brent Libano, Patrick Wisniewski, Gil Cabrera, Watley, Mark Eversole, Todd Badger, Joe Edgel, Kevin Yank, the Tesla Owners Club of San Joaquin Valley, Michael Williams, Will Stedman, Derek Nesselrote, Justin Perez, Jeremy Harris, Chris Beach, Tom Mills, Corey O'Donnell, Aaron, John Cody, Joel Sapp, Paul Casarino, Richard Corley, Chris Osborne, KB, Ken Epstein, Doug Carey, James Gregory, Adam Lavoy, contact1callcenter.com, Jason Chalukas, Travis Krenzel, Bruce Otterstein, Tom Behan, Josh Pennington, Matt Kalin, John from Cream Ridge, New Jersey, Sean Tisdale, Dustin Hart, and Michael Gallo. I don't know if that thump just made its way through to the microphone. My, my daughter's stomping around upstairs, and I could feel the floor down here. I'm recording downstairs shake. So if there was a little bump on the on the mic there, I do apologize. Uh, finally, an extra big thanks goes out to the Roadster in Space tier backers. Big thanks to Pete White, Lyle Austin, Steve Radspinner, Fernando Cordero, Lawton from Chicago, who I just had a one-on-one chat with this week as uh, part of the Roadster in Space tier benefit. They get a one-on-one chat every month if they elect to choose it. I always enjoy talking to Lawton the hour always flies by. Sean Neidig, Neil Weaver, Jackson Wallace, Rolf and Jennifer Evers, Howard Anthony Smith, Victoria Iacovetto, Tesla Hitchhiker 42, Carol Weston, Robert from Near Philly, and Kristen Rumble. Thanks to all of you at all of the Patreon tiers for your very generous support. I do sincerely appreciate it. I, I, I mean it when I say it does not get taken for granted. Because this podcast, it's out there for free every single Sunday, same time, same day every week, every Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. And everybody that's kind enough to back me on Patreon is doing so voluntarily out of the goodness of their hearts and wallets as well. So I really do thank all of you for that. And with that, I've come to the end of Ride the Lightning episode 437. How many episodes are left this year? Let's see here. This one's publishing on the 17th. Okay, so technically two more because 
the uh, 439 will publish on New Year's Eve, on the 31st. Many of you might not listen to it until 2024, but I guess that'll be the one. So two weeks from now, I will do my annual tradition, my annual Tesla predictions for each car. I have to add in Cybertruck now. I guess I guess I've had Cybertruck in there, but now that the Cybertruck's out, the predictions will have to change for for that. So that's going to be a fun one. That's, I always enjoy sitting down and putting a bunch of thoughts on paper about that and trying to not only predict what's going to happen, but going back to the previous year and scoring myself, holding myself accountable to see how accurate or not my predictions from the previous year were. But between now and then, we've got one more episode to go, 438. That'll publish on Christmas Eve. So that'll be uh, ahead of the, the holiday week there. So as always, Ride the Lightning rolls on. Doesn't matter if there's holiday or not. Every Sunday, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, I'm here for you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your shared enthusiasm for Tesla, for these cars that are so much fun, and this company that is trying to improve the world, trying to improve the the way that we travel by by car, by electrification and autopilot and full self-driving and in some cases, high performance, you know, it's, uh, they make it fun. They make it more fun than it's ever been in, in my lifetime. And that's part of the reason that I do this. So anyway, I'll let you go. I've held you long enough. Happy electric motoring, my friends, and I'll see you next week. I mean, I think a Tesla is the most fun thing you could possibly buy ever. That's what it's meant to be. Our goal is to make... It's, it's not exactly a car. It's actually a thing to maximize enjoyment. It's maximum fun.